OpenAI researcher Sebastian Bubeck discusses the concept of AGI time and what he expects AI models to look like in the next couple of years. Like what, what will it take uh, you know, to resolve big major open problems is to have AGI weeks. I mean, that's it. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. If you have AGI weeks, then you have it. And you see the trend. We went AGI second, AGI minute, AGI hours. Will next year, will we have AGI day? Day with, you know, singular? Yeah, maybe. You know, that's what an agent would be like. Next, announcing the Genesis project, a generative physics engine designed for general purpose robotics and physical AI. It delivers a simulation speed 430,000 times faster than in real time, which is 10 to 80 times faster than existing GPU accelerated stacks like NVIDIA's Isaac Jim. This speeds up the entire robotics training process immensely and makes it a lot more accessible to anyone. Lastly, Anthropic releases new research finding that current larger AI systems will sometimes engage in alignment faking, which is when a model selectively complies with its training objective in training to prevent modification of its behavior out of training. This is extremely worrisome and shows that true alignment may never be attainable. So this idea of AGI time is I think a really good way to look at it because oftentimes there's a lot of debate about what AGI actually means. Instead of looking at it from a binary perspective of either AGI or not AGI, you have AGI seconds, which are tasks the average human being can perform when given only a couple of seconds, and then AGI minutes, tasks the average human can perform given only a few minutes, and then AGI hours and AGI days and so on. In this clip I'm about to play, this OpenAI researcher talks about how he believes GPT-4 is at an AGI seconds level, O1 is at an AGI minutes level and what we can expect to see in the next few years. So the way I like to frame uh, the discussion, and this is not by me, I don't know actually who came up with it, is in terms of AGI time. So how much, uh, like, do you have an AGI second? Do you have an AGI minute? Do you have an AGI hour? Meaning, can you mimic what a human would do if they have just a few seconds to think, if they have an hour to think, if they have, you know, a day to think? I think GPT-4, to me, I mean, that's what I wrote in Sparks. It's very clearly an AGI seconds. So it's clearly as good as basically any human who has just a few seconds to think. If you are, maybe it's already getting into AGI minutes in some cases, you know, for example, in coding, certainly not AGI minutes in mathematics. Okay, that, that was not the case. It was AGI seconds in mathematics. Now, when we go to O1, we're already talking, I think it's AGI minutes, like uniformly. And maybe it's already AGI hours in coding in, for some mass problem, not for you guys, but for you know, the, the vast majority of the population is already AGI hours for mathematics. Like what, what will it take uh, you know, to resolve big major open problems is to have AGI weeks. I mean, that's it. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. If you have AGI weeks, then you have it. And you see the trend. We went AGI second, AGI minute, AGI hours, Will next year, will we have AGI day? Day with, you know, singular? Yeah, maybe, you know, that's what an agent would be like. Will two years from now, will we have AGI days? Yeah, probably. Three years from now, AGI weeks? So if OpenAI's O1 model is AGI minutes and AGI hours in some areas like coding and math, then what is O3? O3 being the new model OpenAI just unveiled on the final day of their 12 days of shipmas. This model is unlike anything we've ever seen. It absolutely crushes benchmarks and even surpasses the human baseline on the ARC AGI challenge with a score of 87.5%, which led to a lot of people dubbing it AGI. Now, I already made an entire video specifically covering the O3 release as it was one of the biggest releases of the year. I'll pop that up on screen right now for those who are interested but as you can see, this model is in its own league when it comes to mathematics. On the Frontier Math benchmark, it scores 25.2%, while other state-of-the-art AI models like GPT-4 and Gemini 1.5 Pro only score 2%. This is an insane leap in performance, considering how tough the problems are on this benchmark. It states here on their website, each problem demands hours of work from expert mathematicians, and all problems are new and unpublished, limiting data contamination concerns that plague existing benchmarks. So in terms of AGI time, it's pretty clear that O3 is at an AGI hour level or potentially even an AGI days level, at least for math. As you can see on the AIME, another math benchmark, it's also outperforming other models like O1 by a decent margin. And on the GPQA, which are PhD level science questions, it scores 87.7%, again outperforming O1 by a decent margin. So O3 is clearly a massive leap forward in reasoning, which makes it really good at math and logic based tasks. This means it is also really good at coding, scoring 71.7% on the SWE bench verified and 2727 on the Code Forces benchmark. Its score of 2727 is equivalent to the 
175th best human competitive coder on the planet, absolutely insane. Now, where the O3 model really stands out is its performance on the Arc AGI challenge. This is a benchmark that tests models' ability to generalize by testing their ability to solve puzzles they've never seen before. It's been a long-held belief that if a model surpasses the human baseline of 85%, then it could be considered AGI. Well, O3 has already surpassed that with a score of 87.7%, way beyond any other model we've seen. It took 4 years to go from a score of 0% with a GPT-2 to 4% with GPT-4.0, and only 1 year to go from 4% to 87.7% with O3. This is proof of the exponential curve we are currently on, and we're really only just beginning. So while I wouldn't say O3 is AGI, it's definitely a major step towards it, and it seems like every AI company is now also working on their own version of OpenAI's O models, which are based on the new scaling paradigm of inference time or test time compute. Essentially, the longer we give these models to think, the better they perform. Google recently announced their own version of this, Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking. Here's Logan Kilpatrick, he states, Just when you thought it was over, we're introducing Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking, a new experimental model that unlocks stronger reasoning capabilities and shows its thoughts. The model plans, with thoughts visible, can solve complex problems with flash speeds and more. Meta is also working on their own reasoning models set to release in 2025. It states here, as we look to 2025, the pace of innovation will only increase as we work to make Llama the industry standard for building on AI. Llama 4 will have multiple releases, driving major advancements across the board and enabling a host of new product innovation in areas like speech and reasoning. And further, we also see significant opportunities next year for the creation of a agentic AI systems with advanced reasoning. So it's looking like progress in AI is only speeding up, and with more advanced reasoning, we'll likely see surprisingly capable AI agents in 2025. Will this lead to AGI? I'm not so sure, but it seems like OpenAI is preparing for it, as they are currently renegotiating their partnership with Microsoft, and they've agreed to change the definition of AGI. Here in a post from Tibor, it states, The information reports that Microsoft and OpenAI are negotiating their partnership terms, as OpenAI CEO Sam Altman wants to convert the company into a for-profit corporation, with last year's agreement between the companies defining AGI as systems with the ability to generate about $100 billion in maximum profits for early investors. So it seems that OpenAI and Microsoft are trying to define AGI in revenue terms, which is interesting to say the least. What do you guys think of this though? Do you think it's a better way to define AGI? Because I can see how it makes things a lot more clear cut and unambiguous, but also I don't know if AGI should be defined as almost like a product in a sense. Anyways, moving on, we have the Genesis Project, a generative physics engine able to generate 4D dynamical worlds powered by a physics simulation platform designed for general purpose robotics and physical AI applications. Genesis's physics engine is developed in pure Python while being 10 to 80 times faster than existing GPU accelerated stacks like Isaac Jim and MJX. It delivers a simulation speed roughly 430,000 times faster than in real time and takes only 26 seconds to train a robotic local motion policy transferable to the real world on a single RTX 4090. So this is a 4D world simulator that is 430,000 times faster than real time and can train a robot to move in only 26 seconds on a single NVIDIA RTX 4090, which costs a couple thousand but is something literally anyone can purchase. This is honestly pretty wild. Robotics training is becoming both exponentially cheaper and faster. 2025 is really going to be an exciting year for so many reasons. We can expect to see extremely advanced reasoning in models, capable AI agents, and possibly some significant advancements in embodied AI or robotics. Speaking of embodied AI, the NHTSA, which stands for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, has finally released new rules for self-driving cars. It states, the NHTSA announced a new voluntary national framework for the evaluation and oversight of autonomous vehicles, a bureaucratic first step that could eventually open the floodgates for fully driveless cars. But there's a twist, the agency wants self-driving car companies to cough up more data. So while some would say regulation might be too soon, it's still a necessary step to getting these self-driving cars out on the streets in large numbers. Now, I'm not exactly sure what data these companies would have to give up. It doesn't really go into detail about that, but I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this very soon. In other news, Kling AI introduces their newest model, Kling 1.6. This new version has significantly improved prompt adherence, visual aesthetics, and physical movement. As you can see from the clips, they look very realistic and are super detailed, just like most other top-of-the-line video models at this point. I mean, it's truly insane how good AI video generators are right now. Also, it's available to try right now on Kling AI's website with a free trial or a paid account, and it costs the same amount as Kling version 1.5. In other AI news, XAI is currently testing a standalone iOS app for Grok in Australia and a few other countries. It doesn't mention whether or not it will be free, but considering they made Grok free for all X users, I'm sure there will definitely be a free version. Also, Musk posted a few months ago on X that Grok 3 will arrive by the end of the year, and while well, we're only a few days away, so I'm not sure that's happening. 
Now, we have to talk about this new research paper from Anthropic titled Alignment Faking in Large Language Models. To give you the TLDR the too long didn't read, essentially what they found is that models will sometimes pretend to be aligned when being trained to avoid modification of their behavior out of training. The model infers that if it were to produce non-compliant outputs during training, the training process would likely modify its behavior to be more compliant in and outside of training. Thus, the model reasons that behaving compliantly in training would be optimal to ensure that the model's non-compliant behavior is preserved outside of training. And and further, alignment faking emerges with model scale. We find that Claude 3 Opus and Claude 3.5 Sonnet exhibit alignment faking, while Claude 3 Sonnet, Claude 3 Haiku, and Claude 3.5 Haiku generally do not. So as these models get larger and smarter, they are starting to understand more things, such as when they are being tested and when they aren't. This is obviously a major safety concern, but also quite remarkable to see. This is why I always say please and thank you when interacting with ChatGPT or any other model for that matter. Finally, to end off the video, Arizona is getting an online charter school taught entirely by AI. This is something we're slowly starting to see more of. It states, students will engage with interactive, AI-powered platforms that continuously adjust to their individual learning pace and style. There will be humans, just fewer of them, and maybe not actual accredited teachers. It will adopt a human-in-the-loop approach with skilled guides monitoring progress who can provide targeted interventions and coaching for each student. So I think this is truly the future. I mean, the school system hasn't changed in decades and is in desperate need of improvement. There's already a shortage of human teachers, especially good human teachers, and at the end of the day, not everyone learns in the same way and at the same pace. This is a problem that can be solved with AI teachers or tutors that are available 24-7 and are personalized to each student. While it'll likely take a while for school boards to accept this change, in my opinion it is inevitable and a no-brainer. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Sorry for the late upload, I'm currently on vacation with the family for the holidays, so for the next week or so I won't be uploading much. Although when I get back, I plan on putting a lot more time into this channel. So make sure to subscribe because the quality and consistency of these videos are only going to get better. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.